In this video, we're going to take a look at a pretty common calculus exercise. We, we see it in just about every textbook and in and, and just about every calculus class. And it's, um, it's called a concept called curve sketching, which means we're going to try to take a function that, that we're given and we're going to try to sketch its curve, sketch its graph without any help from a calculator uh, or, or in anything of the sort. Just using our algebra skills and our calculus skills, we're going to try to find the graph of this function. Um, so when you think about things that we know that, that reveal parts of a graph of a function, we, we know algebra things and we know calculus things. Um, algebra things that we learned in previous semesters that tell us a little bit about the graph of a function would be things like its domain and its range, um, its x and y intercepts, which is where it crosses the x or y axis, uh, if it has any vertical asymptotes or if it has any horizontal asymptotes. <clears throat> that all, the, all of those things reveal uh, a little bit about its graph. But then we also have new things that we learned this semester uh, in calculus that tell us a little bit about its graph as well, like increasing and decreasing intervals. Um, that's where the function goes up or goes down. Uh, extrema, concavity, points of inflection, all of these kind of things are, are important as well and give us probably even more detail about uh, a function's graph. So the idea behind these curve sketching problems where they ask you to sketch the graph of some function is to take all of what we know, algebra and calculus, and put it all together to come up with uh, a graph of, of a function. And n nothing, nothing should, should conflict. Um, you, you should never have conflicting information here. So everything we find should support everything else that we find. So let's start with the algebra stuff and then we'll, we'll move on to the calculus stuff. So here's our function again, uh, domain, range, intercepts. Let, let's see if we can find all of, all of these things. Now the algebra stuff I'm gonna go through a little bit more quickly because this is a calculus class. So I, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the algebra. I suspect you're probably already comfortable with a lot of this stuff. The domain of this function, uh, this function is defined everywhere except where the denominator is zero, which is at two and negative two. Either of those x values would give you division by zero. So the domain is the set of all x values such that x does not equal plus or minus two. As long as your x value is not either one of those, you're in the domain. Um, the range it looks like for this function, you can get pretty much all y values. Um, depending on what x is, you get positive y values and negative y values as big or as small as you want. Um, so for that reason, the range is going to be all real numbers. And I am going kind of quickly through this. Uh, I probably could have made that argument a little bit um, more strongly. But yeah, the range is all real numbers. The x-intercept is where the y value is zero. If this was set equal to zero, if we let y equal zero, that's only going to happen when x is zero, which would make the numerator zero. So the x-intercept is zero comma zero. The y-intercept occurs when the x-coordinate is zero. So zero divided by zero minus four is zero. So the y-intercept is 0, 0 as well. The, um, the vertical asymptote, you recall uh, a vertical asymptote looks, looks kind of like this. It's where you have um, a vertical line and then the, the function will either explode to positive infinity or negative infinity at a place like this. Um, that happens when the denominator is equal to zero, which here looks like it's at plus or minus two. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals two and x equals negative two. So we have two vertical asymptotes um, for, for our particular function. Um, and by the way, this is not our graph. That was just a, an example. I'm, I'm not saying that's actually the graph of our function. 
Um, the horizontal asymptote, if you think back to your algebra days, there are some rules that help you figure out where a function might level out horizontally. Um, th this is called a horizontal asymptote. This function has a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Um, and without going into a lot of details, that's because the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. There's some rules that are involved there that uh, I'm not, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on in, in this video. So these algebra things are, are helpful. Uh, they're, they're really helpful. They, they start to show us a little bit about what our graph could look like. Um, we have a vertical asymptote at negative 2, a ver vertical asymptote at positive 2, a horizontal asymptote uh, along the x-axis. Um, we know we have an intercept for the x-axis and the y-axis at the origin. Now, I still don't know what's happening in these other regions, uh, so we still have some work to do, but at least we have a little bit of a head start. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the calculus stuff. Um, what about critical values and increasing and decreasing intervals and things like that? That always starts with finding the derivative. Now, f for these curve sketching problems, th th these problems can get really, really long. So to speed things up a little bit, I went ahead and found the derivative and the second derivative to, just to make the video a little shorter. Um, to get from the original to the derivative, I, I will at least tell you I used the quotient rule. So if, um, if you want to practice this on your own, start with the original, use the quotient rule. We have a video on the quotient rule if you forgot it, and you should get this as your answer. This is the derivative. Okay, now what do we do with the derivative? Well, we start by looking for our critical values, which are places where the derivative is zero or undefined. Um, and I can tell it's going to be um, undefined at plus or minus two. And the numerator is never zero. So um, I've got a negative minus uh, a number. So that th this is always going to be negative in the numerator. But the denominator can be zero, which would make the derivative undefined at plus or minus two. Now, plus or minus two those are not in my domain, so they're not technically critical values, but they are important to us. So I am going to put them on a number line um, because things could change increasing or decreasing before or after 2 or negative 2. All right, so let's, um, let's pick some test points. What points? It, it doesn't matter as long as it's before negative 2, between negative 2 and 2, and after 2. So maybe we'll take f prime at, let's say, negative 3, f prime at 0 for the middle, maybe f prime at 3 for the right side. We're going to take these, we're going to plug them in the derivative because I'm curious whether the original function is increasing or decreasing, which will be dictated by what answers I get here. So if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared, then make that negative, minus 4, that's a negative, divided by a positive. How do I know this is positive? Well, this quantity is squared, so it has to be a positive. That means this net result will be negative. Now, I could have gone ahead and found the exact number, uh, negative 17 or negative. I, I don't know what the number is. I, I don't really care, and I, I don't need to know. Um, a negative derivative means that the function is going to be decreasing before negative 2. When I plug in 0, I get 0 minus 4, that's a negative, divided by a positive, that's negative. And then when I plug in 3, I get a negative as well. So it's decreasing everywhere. That's a little strange. A lot of times our functions will go decreasing and then increasing and then alternate or whatever. Um, but that's okay. Uh, it, it can be decreasing everywhere. 
All right, so that's going to help us with our, our graph. All right, next let's look at our second derivative. This will help us with um, concavity, points of inflection, that sort of thing. So uh, for this, let's see, I'll switch my color. Um, the second derivative is going to be zero. Let's look at the numerator um, when x is zero because 2 times 0 is 0, and then that makes the numerator be 0, which makes the whole function be 0. Uh, and it can be undefined at 2 or negative 2, because those values would make the denominator be 0. So I've got negative 2 and 2. Um, and then now I'm, I'm curious what's happening in terms of concavity in these sub-intervals here. So let's pick some, some test values. Let's take f double prime at negative 3, about negative 1, 1, and 3. Okay, And again, I don't really care about the numerical answer I get. I'm mostly just concerned whether this is positive or negative, because that's going to tell me concave up or concave down. So plug in a negative 3, I've got a positive times a negative, because x is negative 3, times a positive divided by a positive, because negative 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5, 5 cubed is positive. So positive times a negative times a positive so all in all, this is going to be negative, indicating this is going to be concave down. This is the second derivative. It's not decreasing. I didn't say that necessarily. I said it's concave down because the second derivative is negative. How about negative 1? We have a positive times a negative times a positive divided by a negative. So a negative divided by a negative is positive. That means that it's concave up. Uh, if you plug in a 1, positive, 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 negative, that's um, concave down. And lastly, plug in a 3. Everything's positive. It'll be concave up. Okay, so concave down, concave up, concave down, concave up. Now let's talk about what is and what is not a point of inflection. So a point of inflection, as you recall, is a place where the function changes concavity. Now we would be tempted to say that negative 2, 0, and 2 are all points of inflection, but that's not true. And it's for a subtle reason. Now, can you tell why all three are not points of inflection? Well, the answer is, is that 2 and negative 2, they're not even in the domain of our function. There is no point at negative 2 and 2 for our original function. So 0, is, there, you could have 0. 0 is in the domain of our function. So 0 is a point of inflection. The graph changes concavity here. But remember, negative 2 and 2, this was a vertical asymptote. This is not a point of inflection. The same thing for positive 2. This is a vertical asymptote, not a point of inflection. Um, so with that being said, we've got a lot of information here. Let's go back to one of our, our earlier pages. Um, we've got the domain, the range, the intercepts, the asymptotes, um, critical values. There weren't any, but that's okay. We know where it's increasing and decreasing. Uh, there was no relative extrema. Now, let's, we, we didn't really talk about that explicitly. Let's go back and clarify that. Um, here, there is nowhere where it goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So we don't have any relative maxes or mins. So there's no relative extrema. We've got the concavity figured out. We know the points of inflection. We've got everything. 
So really now it's just a matter of putting it all together. So let's go um, just find some, some empty space somewhere. I'll just make a, a fresh screen here and let, let's see if we can uh, put it all together. Okay, so look back at your notes. Um, I'll try to do some of this from memory, from, from whatever I can recall. So we've got negative two and two. I know those were important places. Okay, I know we had a vertical asymptote at negative two, a vertical asymptote at positive two, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which was the x-axis. I know we had a x and y intercept at the origin. Um, I know it was decreasing, decreasing, and decreasing everywhere. Okay, I, I re remember that. I remember that it was, um, and here, I'll tell you what, how about I do this? I'll put a little decreasing, decreasing, and decreasing. I'll, I'll put a little bit of information up here at the top. Um, I remember, and you can look back at your notes, that it was um, concave down, concave up, um, concave down, and concave up. This was up to negative two, negative two to zero, zero to two, and after zero. So, um, and I know we've got our horizontal asymptote and vertical asymptote, which it, which it has to hug. So when you put all this together, it's like, man, how, how does all this work? So to be decreasing, I guess I'm gonna have to be below the x-axis here. And then to go from the horizontal asymptote to the vertical asymptote, I'm going to have to do something like this, I imagine. And which, by the way, that is decreasing and it's concave down. Okay, that looks pretty great. To be decreasing in this middle interval here, I guess I need to start up here and end down here. That's the only way you can really be decreasing, I suppose. Now I have to start by decreasing in a concave up manner and then switch to be decreasing in a concave down manner while passing through the origin. So here I am decreasing concave up to start with, concave down to finish. And then lastly, I need to be decreasing but in a concave up manner while still hugging the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So, uh, I'm going to go with this is the graph of our original function. So I'll rewrite that on our last page here. Um, f of x equals x over x squared minus 4. Now this was pretty cool because I did all of that work with no calculator, no help. Um, it was just us, us and paper and pencil, or digital <laughs> paper and pencil. Um, but we did it all using calculus, which was which is pretty cool. Now, um, I did um, go through and graph this on a graphing calculator. So let me um, go over to my tool and take a screenshot of it. Okay, so here's the graph from my graphing utility. And if you compare that to our graph that we got, it's, it's pretty spot on. So um, hopefully you're able to follow along with those steps. I do realize that I skipped uh, a number of steps like taking the derivative and things like that. So if you need help with the quotient rule or any of the algebra, feel free to look back at, um, at any of our other videos. But anyways, uh, hopefully this helped you with a good curve sketching example.